we got this uh, very young man, 20 year, 21 years old, uh, and uh, he came to us with a complaint of proptosis, swelling of the eye and redness of the eye on the right side. And he has a history of fall, that's about uh, one month back, with some head injury. He recovered well from the head injury, and uh, now it is about a month time, and he came to us with proptosis and congestion double vision in the right eye. So we examined the patient and did CT scan and MRI and uh, we found that the patient is suffering from a carotico cavernous fissure. We have taken for an uh, angiogram for this patient, uh, digital subfraction angiogram. This is a right uh, carotid artery angiogram which is showing that uh, the right carotid artery is opening into the cavernous sinus and there is a huge reflux, uh, especially into the supraophthalmic uh, vein and then into the jugular venous plexus and there is hardly any cerebral circulation. So this is a 3D and uh, as we look at the 3D we can understand that uh, there is a very high flow fistula this is the carotid artery which is opening into the cavernous sinus, raising the pressure of the cavernous sinus up and the blood is going through from the cavernous sinus into the supraophthalmic vein. Hence the patient is not able to drain the venous drainage from the eye into the cavernous sinus. There is a reversal of flow. That's the reason the eye is congested, looking red and there is a diplopia and that's how the problem is. This is called a carotico-cavernous fistula. And this is the AP view, again showing the same pictures of a carotico-cavernous fistula, direct type A carotico-cavernous fistula. This is basically, this is important when we are doing the angiogram of the carotid artery on the left and we see that through the anterior communicating artery, the blood is coming down into the fistula and uh, the fistula is filling even from the left carotid injection. We have such patients we should do a cross compression study and this cross compression study is done with the compression on the same side the fistula with the injection from the other carotid and vertebral artery basically to look into the cross flow as well as the site of the fistula here we are trying to locate the site of the fistula this is the lateral vertebral injection which is showing us the site of the fistula this is the vertebral artery injection through posterior communicating into the cavernous sinus and because this is a very high flow fistula and the blood is getting sucked so this is the site of the fistula so now once we have decided the site of fistula and it looks like this so there are multiple options for treatment the first thing we can go from the carotid and we can do a coil embolization. Second thing is we can go from this into the fistula and uh, do a coil plus onyx injection. And then the third option will be going here and and putting a detachable balloon and embolization. And the other option will be to just go across the fistula and put a stent graft so the fistula is excluded from the circulation. And here we will go with the stent graft and try to place it from here to here. So once we put the stent graft here to here across the fistula, this fistula should not feel any more. Uh, to treat this patient by putting stent graft across the fistula, we have taken the patient under general anesthesia and taken excess into the right carotid artery. And uh, we will put our 7F long seat up to here. And then we will put our distal excess catheter over here. And then we will go with a wire and meanwhile, I'll take a road map through the vertebral artery injection and uh, the fistula site, which will be demonstrated much better. And then I can place my stent precisely over the fistula. So to do that, first I'm going and doing a balloon occlusion test and a fistulogram with a balloon occlusion to be very precise about the site of the fistula. So now I have taken a 7F long seat and inside the 7F long seat we have this distal axis catheter which is going all the way to the side of the fistula because we are going to take a graft master which is very stiff stem graft 
so it's better that we should have our dyslexus catheter all the way uh, near the fistula. This is a 6.4, 6.3 French uh, dyslexus catheter from Stryker and uh, this is how it looks like once we have put this and uh, this is almost, so this is just at the fistula, you can see that and uh, once I have done that then I have taken This is my graft master, friend graft, which is just across the fistula. As we can see, this is the site of the fistula, just at the center of the graft. And uh, this is the center of the graft, and this is the site of the fistula. So look at the first frame to better know the site of fistula. This is the site of the fistula. And uh, I might pull my graft master a little bit all the way till here and then start deploying. So I'm deploy. I just pulled my graft mask a little bit and then start deploying over here. And this is the site of the fistula and covering right from about three millimeter from here and about three millimeter from here. This is a 3.5 into 19 graft master and uh, nicely getting deployed over here. And once we have done that, so this is a fully opened graft mast over here. This is the fully opened graft mast over here. And uh, this is our angiogram after the graft mast. We can see that the fistula has dramatically slowed down but still filling. So this can happen when you have your proximal or distal end of the graft is sitting on an angle over the internal carotid artery. So decided to take another, so this is the another graft master over here. This is the graft master, the first, and this is the second, just getting inside it. So just a small position and then bring it back because this bend is allowing the blood to sip between the vessel wall and the graft. So I've taken another graft and just deploying it from the proximal part of the graft master down. And uh, once we have done that, this is the check angel, it's looking beautiful. There is no sign of the fistula at all. It is completely gone. The right carotico cavernous fistula is completely cured. And uh, this is my lateral view and we have to take a common carotid injection to see whether sometime your external carotid might so better. So we have a beautiful length of carotid and the grafts are sitting there nicely. We can see there that the graft and the fistula site is closed and there is no carotidocavernous fistula filling whatsoever from the, right, uh, from the external or internal carotid artery. Geogram showing that's a beautiful cure of this disease, the carotidocavernous fistula, which is a traumatic type A carotidocavernous fistula, which is now cured.